Oh, that looks all right. Okay. Well, <coughs> welcome, ladies and gentlemen, back to Habitat 2020. Back, of course, in the Pierce Resurgence, where my friend Craig Challen and I are just completing an expedition dive. And before I tell you the details of the dive, I'd like to introduce my colleague. Uh, very well, very, very well known, very respected, uh, Dr. Craig Challen. Here he is. Yeah, good day viewers. Great to be back in the Pierce once again. And good to see you out there in YouTube land. And uh, who's a special shout out tonight, Craig? Uh, well, obviously, as usual, to the uh, the boys in Florida at Cast Underwater Research. So good day, uh, Andy and Brett and uh, all the other boys there. You can't remember their names, can you? Oh, well, I remember Andy and Brett. <laughs> what about Matt? Matt and Charlie and Charlie they're all great blokes now I'm just going to change light sources we'll be right back with you viewers ah much better we're back here again in the seven meter habitat uh, with Dr Challen just where we left off during the interview process so um, Craig uh, this is a new habitat for us the seven meter orange inflatable how are you finding the conditions in here tonight uh, very good Harry so uh, we've uh, in about a 16 hour dive and we've got three hours to go. So uh, 13 hours into it. And I've got to say that it's great to find yourself in this luxuriously appointed accommodation that we have here. Um, would you like to know about a few of the features? Well, I remember uh, if you cast your mind back four years ago, I interviewed Dave Hurst uh, down at the 16 metre habitat, which had a lot of the similar uh, apparatus in there. But uh, this year we've had some upgrades, Craig. We certainly have. There's been a process of development over the last few years, and uh, we have uh, new and improved uh, artefacts at our disposal. All right. For let's example, talk me through them. Uh, so, last time we had the Mulematic 5000, which that, was a great leap forward. Well, that was a quality item. It, it, it wasn't a quality item. <laughs> what was that? That was, that was <laughs> one of the most awfully conceived and produced. <laughs> Uh, items I've ever seen in my life. Where was that made? Uh, that was made in the Harris garage. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so it filled with water, and Dave and I basically couldn't breathe the entire decompression. Yes, yes. So we've uh, we've resourced from Western Australia this time, and we have here the limited release Mulematic fifty five hundred. Is that the tall boy? This is the thin man. <laughs> right, like myself. Yes. Now, what's special about this one, Craig? Uh, well, it is uh, far more robust. Mm -hmm. um, definitely up to cave conditions. It has a larger fan with more thrust and more sorb. Wow. It's more of everything. Certainly easy breathing with the Mueller Medic 5500, yeah. Craig. And more noise. A lot more. Shall we give it a run? Let's give it a run. All right. Right. Just got to find the... Uh, uh, this one... Now, that's not 240 volts for the viewers at home. This is uh, 12 volts DC, so nothing to be alarmed about. Not that we couldn't take 240. <laughs> we could, obviously. And actually, if we get a spark here, we'll be more than 240, because this habitat is full of 50% uh, nitrox at the moment, Craig. 80%, actually. 80%. You ready? Yep. Holy moly. Oh, I feel like cooling breeze wafting through the habitat. It certainly makes for easy breathing, Craig. Oh, my word. Let's disconnect so we can okay. continue the discussion. Yeah, yeah. Because that, that is essential for life, but not great for. You will much. notice the power source here, Harry, which yeah. uh, has multiple uses. Um, this what comes. You, what are you doing? I'm plugging into my suit. Oh, warm hands, warm heart. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Craig, you're an old romantic. Which is good, because we've been in here for eight hours nearly, haven't we? Oh, I'm loving it too. <laughs> loving now, it. tell me, how did we get here, Craig? What did we breathe? Uh, oh, 
You're talking about the uh, Triton rebreather. Ah, oh, very nice. Where's it made? Uh, it's made in La Belle France. Ah, those it French. Is Le Triton. Those Frenchies love their caves, oh, don't they? They do, they do, and they're good at it too. My oh. Yep. So uh, this is the latest in uh, in decompression rebreathers. We've abandoned the uh, the wet mules man bags and we've gone commercial this time well you know you can make so much back in the shed but at the end of the day if you want it to work it's best not to make it yourself in my view oh except for the mule bag 5500 limited release yes um so these have served us very well they've uh, been very reliable and uh we're, we're quite happy so talk us through the decompression today what's what's going on um, so decompression, we did the first four hours in water, Ooh, chilly. Uh, and that took us back to the 40 meter habitat. Mm -hmm. So we hopped in there, uh, and, uh, what did we do in there? About uh, just under an hour, I think. Yep. 40 meters. Then we, uh, removed ourselves to the 28 meter habitat, a couple of hours in there, uh, up to the 16. Where we did three hours. Nice. Or so. Uh, maybe closer to four. Maybe closer to four. Um, and that's where we were treated to a few luxury items such as hot soup and chocolate, which makes the day go by mm. smartly wise. Yeah, that's true. Now, tell us about the dive itself, Craig. Where did we end up this year? Uh, who knows, Harry? We'll have to wait for the survey results to come out. But um, uh, it's going down. We know that. And uh, so we've been progressing every couple of years, uh, getting a 10 or 20 meters deeper. Um, last year we, uh, sorry, last time we finished out at 229 meters. And this year we laid a whole reel of line and got down to 243 before it was time to come home. And it's still going. Big tunnel? Uh, big enough, big enough, about, oh, I'd say, two metres diameter, most of it, a few little narrower bits. Mm. All right, well, it's all exciting, and uh, we're paying the price now, of course. Oh, well, we are, but we're on the run home, Harry. Yeah, that's true. Now, the one extra thing we've got in the in the habitat this year, which we haven't had before, is this device, which is the communications out of a uh, commercial diving full face mask, and we have on tap, on the end of this line, one of the finest and most notoriously well-known uh, diving physicians, anesthesiologists and raconteurs, Professor Simon Mitchell from the Department of uh, Anesthesiology, Auckland Hospital. Are you there, Simon? Clockwork, did you hear that? That's from a professional Craig. He says, this operation has gone like clockwork. And this guy's the best. I mean, he would know clockwork when he sees it. Well, he's not a clockmaker. Well, he's not a clockmaker, but um, he knows yeah. clockwork when he sees it. Yeah, yeah. I think he's, uh, he's being metaphorical, Harry. Oh, OK. Well, I feel like that. I certainly feel a lot safer knowing that uh, Simon's up top, you know, keeping everyone on track, stopping anyone going to bed. Because uh, that can happen. The support divers sometimes sneak off to bed. That has been known to happen in the past. <laughs> uh, so uh, I think that pretty much covers it. So look, it's great to um, speak to our friends over in Florida again. I'm sorry it's taken so long for us to get back to them. Uh, they get to do a lot more diving than we do, clearly. We have to just steal ourselves for our kind of annual jaunt into the piers to test our habitats and our other equipment. So. Um, just a final word on the Mule Medic 5500. Uh, will we be seeing it in the shop soon? Oh, I think it will be sold at all good. Oh, uh, look at this. Grab a oh, look, look at that. We got a visitor. I did not expect to this. Now, this is this is lucky viewers. This guy's name is John Dallazwana. He was my cave, in, cave diving instructor. <laughs> he's one of the finest men, and he makes a mean salami. And he's brought some oxygen, which could come in quite a bit of use for us. Yes. How are this you, John? Oh, well, you know, I'm sprinting backwards and forwards. Uh, it's nearly 10 o'clock at night and Jody said it's been working like a trooper. I think okay. you should have the rest of the day off, John. <laughs> I will, I will. They're, they're drawing straws. Who's going to take you out tonight? Are they all keen or are they all not keen? <laughs> well, we've got to browse a few people so we can have the pool to draw <laughs> straws from. <laughs> now, can you but give that to Craig? Because I'm just busy, right. fil okay. busy filming an okay. interview. So that's... But... Uh, that's about 150 bar or okay. eight, one of your cylinders. Should be shitloads. I uh, will go and get the 88 in the uh, 
16 metre section as well. Right. And I've been asked to request what gas would you like to breathe to escape this little habitat? Uh, any gas will do. Any gas will supply. Okay, well, beneath us. I think we've got air and 50, so we'll just take Yeah, them. so you've got two lots of 50 beneath me. Okay. And uh, we will have someone to escort you. Thank you. Uh, Why would you don't know who? Oh. We don't know who. Just make sure it's not you, John. No, it won't be me. Tell me, why aren't you wearing your wet meals cap? I think someone's borrowed it. Oh. <laughs> like Actually, it. one of those may have a J in it. But oh. anyway, oh, well, we shall I'm find out. Okay. All right, cheerio. I need a read. <laughs> I'll yeah. see you in a few moments. You will. Quite a few. Uh, well, I've got to get the A. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I won't come in, but... Uh, no, 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 don't, no, don't come in. <laughs> <laughs> I'll leave you to yours. If the lights buttons. are out, no. If the lights are out, don't knock. Okay. okay. Good night. Goodbye. Now, what I was going to say, Craig, is that um, I think there's a business opportunity here for the meal of Manic, the 5500, and uh, not only is it good for eliminating CO2 from the environment we're in, but think about all those people in China who are dealing with smog on a day-to-day -day basis, or maybe over on the east coast of Australia with the bushfires. I think you wouldn't need too many of these to clean China. No. <laughs> well, that's right. Well, I was thinking more like one per household. Well, right. But you think one big one for the whole country. <laughs> that's bloody clever. So I'd like to see by the end of, say, next year, one, a, a Mulematic 5500 in, the, in every single home in China. What do you think? It's got a lot of promise, Harry. You've got to say, you're always thinking, aren't you? Thanks, dude. And uh, just hold the camera for a sec. Okay, I'm holding the camera. And just hold the light. I'm holding the light. And I just want to say a very special good night because all around the world, you're all getting tucked in into your beds. You're probably having a little cup of cocoa. And we're thinking of you because, you know, we're in a very special place right now and we're having a great time. So until next year, good night, viewers. <laughs> good night. <laughs>